everyone and welcome to the best day ever crafting podcast this is a podcast about my making journey and celebrating with you all the reasons why crafting every day makes for the best day ever my name is trish and i can be found on instagram and ravelry as tie-dye diva show notes can be found in the ravelry group and i will leave a link to the show notes in the description box below so I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, today is Friday, August the 27th, and I'm just here again, just letting you know what I've been up to in my crafty corner of the world in the past couple of weeks. So before I share with you some of the making, um, just a little bit of admin. Our year of hats make along is still going strong. Um, we're about to end the August, of course, the August um, hat and um, heading into the month of September, which is a brand new hat. So if you want to know all about that, head over to the Ravelry group. We have links, we have threads and all the information you need to know. If this is like your first time here, you want to know what these make-alongs are all about. All that information can be found in the Ravelry group. Our second make along for the year, um, cause we're doing it in a quarter. So we are about midway through, probably more than midway through the third quarter. We're making anything for the home, dishcloths, washcloths, um, quilting, um, in, in, in all of the crafts, you know, be it sewing or knitting or crochet. We're just making for the home. So again, all the information will be found in the Ravelry group and you'll find that link in the description box below. So today I'm going to share with you um, one finished object, a couple of works in progress, and a little bit of sewing. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the only finished object I have to share with you is the July hat. So Kelborn Woolens has produced 12 hats. It corresponds to the month of the year and they're all absolutely free. So we, as a podcast group, we've been attempting to make as many of those hats as possible. And this is the July hat. This is probably my favorite yet that I've made. I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed making this. Um, really simple really easy but a really beautiful and stunning finish the yarn that i use is by the plucky knitter and this is their cormo worsted and the color is roasted pumpkin so i think that's showing up pretty good it's really like a burnt orange leaning more towards like a bread that's perfect right there so i have not blocked this yet so I'm looking forward to seeing this pattern open up even more so after I block it. Yeah, love this. So that's the July hat from Kelborn Woolens. And you can access all of the patterns for the year of the hats on Ravelry. <clears throat> so works in progress. I had really hoped by now, <laughs> at least by the next time I recorded that I would have finished my rocket tee. But that didn't happen. It turns out that an I-cord edging takes a lot longer than I anticipated. So, but I've made some progress. I did, um, I was able to finish off one sleeve with the I-cord edging. I think it turned out really, really good. And I am, I'm more than halfway through the neckline. So it's going to be a V-shaped. Hold on, I got my needle stuck in my stitch. So as you can see, it is a V-shaped neckline. And the back is completely done with the I-cord. Edging. One side is done, so I just need to come up the other side and I'll be finished with the neckline. It's not difficult, the, the I-cord edging is just... You just have to take your time. It's just, it's about three to four steps to each bind off. So it's just not, def definitely not as quick as a traditional bind off, but I'm gonna bring this a little closer so you can see. It's totally worth 
the time and effort. Look how beautiful that looks. And it just looks like it's just coming out of nowhere. So I think I shared with you the yarn, again, from Legacy Fiber Arts. I'm using their steel toes and um, also their silk and uh, silk mohair blend. Of course, the darker color is the silk mohair blend and the steel toes is the, light, is the lighter color. I will link to all of my um, projects on my Ravelry page so that you can see the colors because I don't know whether I told you it's like what time is it it's it's 10 o'clock at night today has been one of those days I've been trying to record all day and something has just been getting in the way and I was determined to record today but I just want to show you a close-up look at this mohair this color just brings me so much joy it's just like this beautiful caramel and then sometimes if it's hitting the light, it almost looks like a rose gold. It's absolutely beautiful. It, and um, I should also mention that for the I-cord edge, you are holding two strands of yarn together. Okay. So next up, I will share with you a work in progress I've been working on for quite some time like over maybe a year. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's been over a year. So for um, the make along for the something for the home, I decided to pick up my granny striped blanket again. It's been quite a while since I've given it some love. So I have been able to get a few rows in so I just want to show you what it's looking like so far and I will probably have to stand up. Let's see. I probably should measure this by now. So I think, I don't think it's quite a yard long, maybe not quite. I will measure this um, either tonight or definitely before I record again so you'll know what progress I'm making. That'll help me out too. Sometimes when you're working on a really super big project like this, it looks like you're not getting anywhere. So it's nice to have those those uh, little project placement markers or just, you know, measuring from time to time so you can see you really are making progress. So I'm just trying to get a sense for how wide this is so that you can see how wide it is. It's so wide. Um, it will fit, it fits over our queen bed and it hangs off the side. So my goal so that it will fit our queen bed perfectly. I don't have any particular rhyme or reason for how I'm adding colors. I'm just picking up leftovers from other projects and um, whatever suits my fancy for the moment is what color I pick up next. I absolutely love, love, love working on this. That's one project I want I am working on for the home. And I got a couple of other things I want to work on also. Um, I know, I know we only have one more month <laughs> left in this in the third quarter, but the, the good news is that the fourth quarter is for finishing your whips. So I'm going to be struggling with this dress all evening. Let's see. Okay. So the, the fourth quarter is finish your whips. So um, even if I do cast on a couple of things that's, you know, late for the home, I actually technically have three months to get it finished before the year is up. I'm not committing to finishing that blanket by the end of the year. If I really worked at it, I could, but I just pick it up just leisurely when I can. And I do expect or suspect, expect that I will be picking it up a little bit more often as it gets a little cooler. Right now, it's just been so hot in the Maryland. It's been so hot in Maryland. Today, 
I went out and did some errands and I literally thought I was going to pass out because I've just got so overheated. So I say all that to say I will not be um, picking up that blanket too often until it gets a little cooler, which I hope happens really, really soon. One more whip i like to share with you. Um, I talked about this on the previous podcast that I wanted to cast on for the half and half triangles wrap. This is a pearl Soho pattern. It's absolutely free on their website. And yep, I definitely drank the Kool-Aid and fell down the rabbit hole. It's like everybody is making this and I kind of wanted to be in the in crowd. I gave in to the pressure, but it's such a beautiful, beautiful wrap. It's basically two triangles um, and the triangles are shaped by short rows. So it's all garter stitch and all short rows. And um, super easy, super simple, very intuitive. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. So let me show you the progress I've made. I hadn't even cast on the last time. I recorded and I just realized that several of my stitches have just flown off the deal. So let me get these, get these stitches back on the needle before I show it to you. Just talk amongst yourselves. Does it ever happen to you like you put a project in your bag and you just know you have it all secure? Of course, I don't have point protectors on these needles. Otherwise, that would have never happened, right? I'm glad that didn't happen on the short row section. Um, so I'm going to finish off this row. I'm about halfway done with my first triangle. Hold it up this way so you can see. I've really got my stitches bunched up on this needle. So it's, I don't want to pull too hard because I don't want them flying off again. <laughs> But as you can see, I've got quite a bit of progress done. Like I said, this is like straight up garter stitch. So um, you just knit, knit, knit. I happen to love garter stitch. It's my favorite, favorite thing to knit. Um, you don't have to pay a lot of attention to this. Just, just knit like the wind. I'm just, I just, I just, I, I get it. I totally get why so many people are knitting this pattern. And I'm already thinking about making another one. So the yarn. I'm using Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering. This beautiful blue is called, let's see, pulling out the ball band. So this was from um, a club color from 2019. Um, the Plucky Knitter had a Knitting the Blues uh, club and this colorway is called Blue Blazes. My contrasting color <clears throat> is going to be Plucky Feet, and that color is Bohemian Blue. And as, as I'm sitting here, I realize those two skeins are on my dining room table. So, um, but I showed them last on the last podcast, and I will link to my project page so that you can take a closer look at what the contrast triangle is going to be and here's a really close-up look at blue blazes so pretty it's like all the shades of blue so really really excited about that and i think yeah that's it that's it for knitting and crochet i um oh what i should also mention about the crochet blanket it is from attic 21. Again, I will link to my project page so that you can see which pattern I'm using for the granny stripe blanket. So let me just share with you some sewing. I'm wearing a previous uh, dress number one from Sonia Phillips of 100 Acts of Sewing. And I completed another dress number one that I don't have with me because I'm heading out of town for vacation and it is packed away. But I'm going to insert a few pictures right here so you can see me wearing it.
this might be my favorite dress number one yet. I just, I love the print. Um, I love the drape of the fabric. It, um, I used a 100% cotton that I got from Connecting Threads. Um, not much more to say about it. I, you guys already know how much I love the 100 acts of sewing pattern. So simple, so so easy just pick a beautiful fabric and let the fabric do all the work so um that is my dress number one and i also completed a top i had talked about this on a previous podcast also so oh here it is this is the grace top by friday pattern company and there's a schematic so you can see what it looks like so it's basically a mock neck uh, tank top and it also has these this really uh, these the sleeves are cut in a little closer in the back and the back hem also hangs a little lower in the back so it definitely has a high low look to it so let me show you my grace top and I'll give you a few thoughts about the pattern so here she is you can see that high low effect there this is the front of the garment and you can see how those sleeves really really cut in hold it out like that there's the other side and there's the neck right here you can see it just just slightly drapes just a little bit in the front. So, um, the f this fabric that I'm using, you have seen before. Um, I bought this from, I'm almost sure I got it from fabric.com quite some time ago. They were having an amazing sale and um, I bought a lot of it. As a matter of fact, I think I gave Arthella a couple of yards. I made a dress and um, a top and I think I, I'm sure yep I still have more of this fabric that I will probably make a pencil skirt out of but um, this pattern really really enjoyable to make super quick super easy super simple um, I just don't know how I feel about let me show you the back I don't know how I feel about this particular style on me. Being a larger person, it cuts in quite a bit on the back and shows a bit more skin than I'm used to showing. It's probably just me. <laughs> so I would definitely be wearing it. I thought I was gonna wear it um, into the fall late summer into the fall, but I think I'd be more comfortable wearing it with the blazer over top of it so that I don't have so much showing in the back. That's just my preference. Okay, so yeah. So this again is the Grace um, top from the Friday Pattern Company. So just take my comments you know, if however you, you want to. I would I would still recommend this pattern simply because it is very um, easy to make and um, it's very fashion forward. I mean, take a look at those lines. I'm also wondering if I could possibly make it again, but just grade this out a little bit so that it's not so deep or could I possibly use the back pattern piece, the front pattern piece um, for the back. So we'll look, I may experiment with that and see how I like that. So, so again, Grace Top by Friday Pattern Company. You will not find the Grace Top on Friday Pattern Company's website, but you can find it at several other online fabric retailers. Um, and when I'm doing the show notes, if I, yeah, I should be able to put a couple of links in for you in case you're interested in this pattern after my 
rave review. <laughs> okay. So that's it for um, crochet, knitting, and sewing. Um, so let's talk about a few stash acquisitions. I got a couple of things in the mail <laughs> since we last chatted. So look at these two beauties. I know, I know, I know. There's a fruit fly in here that's tormenting me, and I don't know why. No, that's a mosquito. Oh, goodness. Okay. So these are from uh, Chasing Rabbits Fiber Company. This is on her Polworth base. The color is shell. And this is her, what she calls her... I want to make sure I get this right. Okay, it's not on here, but I believe she calls this her assigned pooling colorways. And basically what that means is that she has designed several patterns that really complement this yarn um, really nicely. So the way she dyed it is for the colors to pool in particular sections. And when you get to the colored sections, the idea is that you're going to do a different stitch Usually it's a highly textured, textured stitch. And what that does is it makes this the, the contrast colors really pop against these, the softer, um, more muted colors. So again, these are the, from her assigned pooling collection, has a beautiful collection of colors and, um, and patterns. So definitely check out um, Dawn of Chasing Rabbits Fiber Company. She's such a sweetheart. She even wrote a, a hand um, written note on one of my skeins. So thank you, Dawn. Absolutely love, love, love these. And I will be doing one of her um, patterns, um, one of her assigned pooling um, shawl patterns with these two. And if I didn't say, is, this is her 100% um, Superwash New Zealand Polworth base. So this is um, a new to me base. I'm really, really excited about trying it out. It's like you get the best of both worlds. You get Superwash, the softness of Superwash, but you get the nice sturdiness of a, a toothy, woolly yarn like Polworth. So looking forward to knitting with those. I picked up two skeins from Chelsea Yarns. And one is her coop sock. And I believe this was a mist dye, if I'm not mistaken. Look how pretty that is. This will make a gorgeous pair of socks. And this is in uh, her 85% 15, 85% merino, 15% nylon base. Really, really pretty. Really digging those golds and browns. And this color here is Be Happy. Yes, Be Happy. Really pretty. Would also make a, ooh, a beautiful pair of fall socks. I may have to get these cast on sooner than later. And finally in yarn, um, I want to share this with you. This beautiful skein is from Suburban Stitcher. And this is the one of the latest clubs I joined. So this is from her, make sure I get this right, her gr gradient, her fade club is what it is. So basically you get one skein a month. And as the skeins, each skein is designed to, or it's dyed to complement the other one so that you can eventually have a fade. If I'm saying that correctly. If that makes no sense, I will link to <laughs> her website where there is a um, better explanation. Okay. Like I said, it's 10, it's 1030. <laughs> it's, Oh, I'm about to expire. So fortunately, I'm almost finished. So the last thing I want to share with you is a new book from published by Pom Pom Quarterly. 
It is called Moon and Turtle. And Pom Pom a Company was kind enough to reach out to me and ask, ask if I would do a review of this book. And of course, I jumped at that opportunity. So um, this is the book, Moon and Turtle. And the designers are Kayomi and Sashiko Bergen. They are twins. And uh, this is their very first um, knitting book. Clearly not their very first knitting patterns. First of all, they're absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so I have not um, had a chance to really sit down and get into it, but that's my goal. Um, this week because I will be doing either just a separate video where I really really get um, deep into the book or I just might include it on a pod on the very next podcast so stay tuned for that but I just want to share with you two patterns that really struck me one of course is the cover the cover pattern look at that this is like the quintessential Rhinebeck sweater and this is called Cordy. Cordy is the pattern. I can't wait to get into this because I really want to know what yarns they use for this. I believe all of the patterns are unisex. They are all customizable. As a matter of fact, um, it's nine patterns all together, each with variable options and the intention that they can be worn by as many people as possible. So there are sweaters, there are hats, um, and this here, this is the second one I want to share with you that really struck me. So this one is called Lusky, and it's a snood or a hood, however you want to call it. I'm going to find one in a lighter color so you can really see. This is just so clever. So look at that. And it does have a drawstring. And it looks like the drawstring is yarn. But look at that. I can see making tons of these and gifting them to like um, people who work outside. You have friends who are construction workers or mail carriers. I think this is just such a clever design. So again, like I said, I'm going to really get into this in the next couple of weeks and make some notes and think about which one I want to cast on this winter. Um, absolutely beautiful book, beautiful illustrations, but I won't say much more because I'll save it all for the review. And because Pom Pom Mag is so awesome, they sent me two copies, one for me and one for for one of you. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to do a giveaway. I will open up a thread in the Ravelry group and just leave a comment. Leave a comment about which um, of these designs you would love to make. Okay, so I will link to um, the Ravelry page with all of the designs so that you can have a chance to just browse through and um, between uh, this episode and the next, we will, I'll choose a name. Yeah, I think that's, I think that'll work out really well. So again, thank you, Pom Pom Meg, for sending this to me. And um, I can't wait to get into it. But I think I pretty much covered everything. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know, I, um, I've been talking a lot about um, health and wellness and good eating. So if you want to, um, if you're interested in what I'm doing and and how that's working out, just you know, keep an eye on my Instagram stories, um, my Instagram feed. Um, I'll just be posting different things, different recipes, different resources and books I've been reading. Um, just trying to be the best I can be while dealing with several health issues. So, yeah, I think that's it all I have to share with you today. So thank you so much for joining me. I am actually heading um, to the beach for a well-deserved vacation. So I will have lots of time for making, lots of time for reflection, 
and goal setting and um, rejuvenation, most importantly. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, I hope you continue to stay well, stay safe, and stay healthy. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.